root changes. This is breakout room number two. We will be covering root changes in Arlington, Bedford, Burlington, Cambridge, Lexington, Lincoln, Medford, Somerville, Winchester, and Woburn. Let's get started. Uh, my name is Melissa Dulé, and I'm the Senior Director of Service Planning. I'll be walking through the changes that we made to the draft bus network redesign map. As Doug mentioned in the first part of the presentation, we made meaningful changes to the network map based on the feedback that we received. A note about order, I'm largely going to present these in numeric order, but there are some routes that are interrelated, so occasionally I may go out of order when there are related route changes. Uh, we made a number of changes, uh, restoring existing routes uh, in whole or in part. I've shown a subset of uh, the routes that we'll be covering today uh, here. So this is a little bit different than the, the slide that Doug showed earlier. Uh, sometimes we've made uh, route changes to better serve medical facilities or senior housing uh, or other destinations uh, at the request of municipalities and others. Uh, sometimes we've added new routes back into the proposal. Sometimes we've made uh, frequency or span adjustments. So the first uh, batch of routes that I'll be talking about relates to the initial proposal for the T39, but that also affects T47 and T96. So uh, the, the next uh, slide I'll present together. Uh, the former proposal was to connect the T39 from Jamaica Plain uh, to Longwood Medical, Boston University, Cambridge, and Somerville, ultimately ending at Porter Square in Cambridge. Uh, but we heard that the route was too long. Uh, this is something that we'd heard from the public, from elected officials, and even during our operator in-reach events, we'd heard that our bus operators were concerned with the route's length and the availability of restroom access for such a long route. Uh, also, some of the other things that we'd heard, Jamaica Plain in particular, wanted direct service to Copley. Uh, and there is the history there with the former Arborway Green Line service providing that direct connection. So that was important to maintain. Uh, in Cambridge, uh, the city was concerned with the ability to carve out layover space at Porter Square, given some of the protected bike infrastructure that has gone in. Somerville residents uh, had noted that there was no direct connection between Davis Square and Union Square uh, that had required a transfer between the T96 and the T39 in our original proposal. So synthesizing all this different feedback that we'd received on many different aspects, uh, we end up with the revised proposal as shown. Uh, the T39 on the left side would retain its direct service to Copley like it does now. And this would replace our initial proposal that had gone all the way up uh, through Cambridge into Union Square and Porter Square. On the left, you can see that we're proposing uh, we would get that connectivity between uh, Union Square and Cambridge, Cambridge Port, Boston University, and Ruggles uh, with a new route, T47. So this is similar to today's 47 bus, but the route is a little different. So this would start actually a little bit beyond Union Square, uh, near the future East Somerville station that will be opening on the Green Line extension later this year. Uh, and it would only go as far as Ruggles. We have other services that would uh, serve uh, Broadway Station and Albany Street and other portions of today's Route 47. And this would be a T47 route, meaning that it would be a high frequency service. It would be every 15 minutes or better, seven days a week from 5 a.m. till 1 a.m. Uh, and that gets the connectivity that we were really looking for, uh, getting folks in Cambridge and Somerville to job opportunities, 
at the Longwood Medical Area, to opportunities for patient care, and also to uh, the BU area, while still allowing that transfer uh, to the T39 for folks who are interested in continuing out to Jamaica Plain and Forest Hills. On the next slide, I can show you how we also made some changes to T96. Uh, I had mentioned one of the things that we'd heard from Somerville in particular was interest in extending uh, a one seat ride with high frequency between Davis Square and Union Square, two very important squares within Somerville. So by sliding where the T39 and the T96 connect, except now that it's the T47, we slid that connection point to Union Square. So what that means is that there would now be high frequency service directly between Davis and Union on the new T96. So this relates to the changes to the T39 that I had mentioned. But at the same time, uh, we also have another different unrelated route change on the Medford portion of the T96 as well. Uh, we heard from many riders of the T96 along Winthrop Street, that would be over here, uh, and George Street, on the former proposal to keep service on College Ave uh, that would create a hardship for them. Uh, the walkout to College Ave was just too far, this is College Ave over here, uh, for the volume of riders there. In the revised proposal, the T96 would serve High Street from Medford Square to Winthrop Circle uh, and would travel down Winthrop Street to George Street, meaning that we're able to provide direct high frequency service to some existing Route 94 riders along High Street here, uh, and also to cut down that walk distance for the folks who had written us coming from George Street uh, or uh, folks coming from Winthrop, Winthrop Street in the Medford Hillside area. The next package of changes relates to bus route 55. The 55 had been proposed as a combination of today's CT2 and 55 and provided local connectivity to the West Fens neighborhood uh, via transfer at a future accessible Heinz station, um, while also connecting Kendall Square and the Red Line to the Longwood Medical Area. But we heard from residents in the West Fens, including many seniors, that they really valued that direct connection to Copley Square so we've split apart our proposal into the 55 to Copley with an 85 bus that serves the function of the CT2 for Kendall and Longwood trips. We're retiring the CT2 nomenclature and instead using the 85 number in its place. I have another uh, map that shows a little bit more of the 85 also. So we would continue to serve Kendall Square, the Port neighborhood in Cambridge, Union Square, and instead of Avon Street in Spring Hill, like the 85 uh, uses today to turn around, due to planned roadway changes in Somerville, we would instead provide a north-south connection between Union Square and Assembly, which is something that we'd uh, heard requested multiple times during our outreach uh, earlier this summer. Next we have roots, oops, sorry. Next we have route 64. Uh, as in our original proposal, we're looking to extend the route to Kendall Square on all days of the week so that there would be a consistent service pattern, unlike today's service, which only goes to Kendall on weekdays. Uh, and we also have two changes on the Boston end of the route to maintain service to North Beacon Street due to significant development plans. Uh, and also to not show that the route would serve future West Station, uh, which is slated to open after our five-year implementation window. Uh, it currently looks like West Station is slated for about 10 years out. Uh, so we're continuing to show, at least for the short term, uh, that the 64 uh, would do what it does uh, today uh, on this stretch through Austin. Next, we have Route 74. This is probably one of the biggest concerns that we had heard within Cambridge uh, was the loss of frequency on Concord Ave. Uh, we did not have the Route 74 on the initial map, which only had the routes 75 and 78. But with the amount of development slated for the area, including low-income housing, which is expected to attract significant transit trips, and also the existing 
residential, employment, and retail opportunities along Concord Ave and near Fresh Pond Circle, we've added the Route 74 back in. Uh, we, this would also have new Sunday service compared to today's service uh, because the 74 only operates uh, Mondays through Saturdays. Uh, at the Belmont end of the route, we also are showing a small uh, route change. Uh, we're showing the route continue into Belmont Center under the railroad bridge. Uh, this would not be possible now with the posted low clearance, uh, but we have some ideas for intersection changes that would allow the posted bridge height to be revised in a way that would allow for restored bus service under the bridge and into Belmont Center. Next, we have Route 76. One concern uh, we'd heard about this route, uh, which goes out to uh, the Civil Air Terminal, uh, Hanscom Civil Air Terminal in Bedford, and to Lincoln Lab and through Lexington uh, and into Alewife was that we had proposed uh, only operating peak period service, uh, and we'd instead upgraded the uh, sort of companion route 62 to be a seven day service. But that was uh, something that was causing a hardship uh, that we'd heard about during our initial outreach. So we have restored midday service uh, on the route 76 while still having the 62 upgraded to seven day service. We also heard about concern about the lack of service along Acorn Park Drive in Cambridge off of Route 2, which is served by today's inbound route. Uh, the, this serves a number of office parks and other developments, and we have added that Acorn Park Drive uh, portion of the route back into both the routes 62 and the 76. Uh, there was also a concern from Lincoln Lab riders that they were being forced to take a longer trip via the Hanscom Civil Air Terminal for their connections. Uh, the intention is that we would serve Lincoln Lab and Hanscom only once per round trip like we do today, and that we would go outbound in the mornings to Lincoln Lab first, then inbound from Hanscom, and then reverse that for the PM. That gives the most direct trips to the most number of riders without folks having to kind of take a lengthy detour through the other portion of the route. And then lastly, there was a concern in Lexington about the loss of service to Lexington Center, uh, which provides either better frequency to the portion of the route where it overlaps with the 62, or also serves a small stretch uh, over near the, the high school, uh, just to the uh, west of Mass Ave. Um, by rerouting the 62 on a slightly longer routing, we're able to serve Lexington Center, get better frequency to that important center in Lexington, allow for transfer opportunities to the Lexpress uh, routes that the town of Lexington operates, uh, and um, get uh, that connection to the high school that folks are looking for. So those are the changes to Route 76. Next, we have Route 80. One of the pieces that we had heard that was missing from our original map proposal was a connection from Arlington to the Medford Green Line Extension Bridge. In the original proposal, we had not included Route 80 at all due to substantial overlaps between Route 80 and the Medford Tufts branch of the Green Line that's slated to open later this year. Uh, in the revised proposal, we restore the Route 80 connection from Arlington Center, that would be here, uh, to Boston Ave and Medford Tufts Green Line Extension Station. And from there, we continue to Davis Square for a red line connection. This also becomes the primary Boston Ave connection here in Medford, uh, which replaces the proposed 94 that I, uh, had formerly been on Boston Ave in our initial proposal and which I have a slide on later. At the outer end of the Route 80, we continue the route from Arlington Center out to Burlington, like the 350 bus does today. So the proposed network uh, redesign version of Route 80 would also be a Route 350 replacement to Burlington Mall Road, 3rd Ave and North Burlington, and would have both Green Line and Red Line connections at Medford Tufts and at Davis Station. Next, we have Route 83. 
On the left is our original proposal, which had been to extend the service to Kendall Square, uh, which would have connected Rinja, Inman Square, and the Port neighborhood to Kendall. Uh, but we heard from Cambridge staff and residents on the importance of the bus connection, specifically from RINJAV users to the services and resources in Central Square, where the 83 terminates today. With other route improvements slated for Kendall Square, we felt that we could continue to route the 83 at Central without impacting the greater vision for improved connectivity to Kendall Square. Oh, sorry. So you can see on the right, we're preserving the 83 to Central Square in the new network. Next, we have Route 87. We had formally proposed significant changes to Route 87, including tying together Broadway and Clarendon Hill with Harvard Street in Medford and Mystic Ave in uh, Medford and Somerville. Uh, you can see the original proposal on the left, which is very different from today's 87 bus. Uh, one of the biggest concerns, and we heard many, many concerns from Somerville uh, and Cambridge and Medford, uh, was about the uh, lack of direct service between Clarendon Hill, Davis, Union Square, Market Basket, Twin City Plaza, and Lechmere. And we heard a lot, lot, lot of comments on this. So in this proposal, we have restored the Route 87 as a direct route that travels from Arlington Center to Lechmere Station. And like in the proposal, the route would operate a consistent service pattern seven days a week, unlike today's route that only goes as far as Clarendon Hill on Sundays. So uh, we would be having the 87 go to Arlington Center on Sundays, which is different from today's 87. This does mean that there would be a stretch of Harvard Street in Medford where we had proposed running new service and uh, where we would not have service in the revised version of the network. Also, uh, it means that uh, Mystic Ave in Medford uh, would be served uh, via the Route 95, which I will talk about shortly. As part of the original 87 proposal, we had also uh, had it be a combination with uh, today's 67 bus to serve the Turkey Hill neighborhood in Arlington as shown on the left. We received a significant amount of feedback from Turkey Hill that having a red line connection at Alewife specifically was important. We also heard from our operator in reach efforts that the proposed route length from Turkey Hill to Sullivan was too long especially since there are not good restroom facilities at the Turkey Hill end of the line, uh, which is in a quiet residential neighborhood. This proposal spins off the 67 back onto a separate route, which would operate Turkey Hill to Alewife weekdays only as shown on the right. There is a route change from today's 67 in that the bus would stay on Mass Ave from Arlington Center to Alewife Brook Parkway as a replacement for the 350 connections on this stretch into Alewife due to the 350 replacement with the 80 via Boston Ave that I spoke about earlier. This would omit Pleasant Street and Route 2, uh, but those areas would still have other transit service under this proposal. Next, Route 89. This is probably the other biggest issue that we had heard in Somerville and Medford. Uh, it was the lack of connection in our original map between Winter Hill, Ball Square, and Davis Square. On the left, you can see our original proposal, which included upgraded high frequency service on the T101 along Broadway at Lagoon Square, the new Green Line extension at Ball Square, and a high frequency T96 service on College Ave, but there was not a direct connection between Winter Hill and Davis. In the new map on the right, you can see the proposed Route 89, which would operate consistently with a single service pattern between Davis and Sullivan, with a stop near the new Ball Square station on the Green Line extension that should be opening uh, later this year. For Route 89 users, note that there would not be a mix of some Clarendon Hill trips and some Davis trips like there is today. Uh, for connections to Clarendon Hill, 
please use the 87 or the 90 and connect at Davis to this 89 service. Now, as a result of the 89 restoration, we have also put the T101 route back onto Main Street in Medford, like it does today, uh, which serves a little farther north on the Medford side of Winter Hill. Uh, while the 89 will still serve Magoon Square on Broadway. Uh, so you can see uh, on the, the map on the right, the, the 101, T101 kind of takes this soft corner here on, on Main Street uh, and omits Magoon Square, unlike the older version, which had been squared off a little bit. I say squared off, that's not really a square. Next. Route 90, in response to concerns with reliability and route length, both from riders and also from our operator in reach efforts, we've looked at shortening this route uh, for better reliability. So at the Western end, this would not go to Arlington Center, but rather would terminate at Clarendon Hill. Uh, Broadway and Arlington would still be served by seven day service on the Route 87 bus. On the Eastern end, this would not go to Chelsea and Everett directly, but would terminate at assembly station. This is different from today's route in that we omit the Sullivan station connections directly and instead provide an orange, an orange line connection on Revolution Drive at assembly station, much closer to the orange line than today's stop that's on Grand Union Boulevard. We also have a separate connection from Assembly to Chelsea and Everett as Route 113 that I'll get into uh, shortly. Now also in response to concerns about the difficulty of connections between Route 90 and the Green Line, especially since this route is intended to be a Route 88 replacement, and especially since Gilman Station uh, on the Green Line extension right behind City Hall and the high school is surrounded with steep grades, there was also a small reroute onto Tufts Street and Washington Street to help facilitate better transfer opportunities at East Somerville Station on the Green Line extension. This requires some street crossings, but we hope this can make a better transfer option available, especially in winter months when steep grades can be most challenging. And then there were also several comments, more than several, many, many comments received on the original proposal regarding the loss of service frequency along Highland Ave overall. Uh, we looked at some of our hours calculations and this criticism was absolutely fair and not our intention. So as a result, this service has been upgraded to every 20 minute service, mostly seven days per week with some periods of every 30 minute service after 10 p.m. Lastly, I do wanna highlight that this service is intended to be a combination of the route 88 and 90. So the service would become a more significant route than the 90 is today. It would still serve Clarendon Hill as it had done in our original proposal. Clarendon Hill. And it would still serve those important school related trips that students and caregivers from all over Somerville might be making to get from West Somerville and Davis and Spring Hill to the high school uh, or to the East Somerville Community School or to the Capuano. Also, the simplified schedules that were published on the trip planner uh, do not include any of those special trips that may be. Uh, needed that might operate today. For example, uh, today there are some afternoon trips on Route 88 that start at the high school during uh, Somerville High School uh, on Highland Ave uh, during periods when large crowds of students might overwhelm the regular 88 service uh, traveling through. So our expectation is that these trips could still operate, but that they would become 90 trips instead of 88 trips. And I had mentioned as part of the Route 90 shortening that we created the new Route 113. So it's been spun off into a separate route that would connect Assembly to Sullivan and over to Everett and Chelsea. This gets better connectivity between Chelsea, Everett and Somerville as had been suggested in our original proposal. Uh, and this has been extended to Bellingham Square in Chelsea uh, which was something we'd heard requested in our Chelsea focus groups as the initial 90 proposal had only gone as far as Chelsea Station uh, and the market basket. Next, we have the routes 94 and 134. So 94 
formerly had been proposed as shown on the left uh, to serve Boston Ave, West Medford, Playstead Road, uh, Winchester, Woburn, and Burlington. Uh, and in the new proposal, there is no Route 94. So instead, we uh, propose restoring the Route 134 from North Woburn uh, to Winchester, Medford, and Wellington, along with some changes to the 80 and 354. Now, there's a few reasons for this. Uh, one, there was a problem with the original Route 94 and that the bus was not able to make one of the turns near West Medford Station due to the railroad crossing and some of the uh, intersection geometry. We also had a lot of interest in restoring the Route 354 express route in Burlington, Woburn, uh, and Medford, but that led to some other network changes, including ultimately the elimination of Route 133 out to Anderson Woburn uh, as a resource offset. And I'll talk about that. I have another slide later. Uh, and then there's also the extension of Route 80 to Burlington that I spoke about on an earlier slide. So uh, with all these changes, uh, nearly all of the proposed 94 is covered by the new 80, 134, and 354. However, the one change that I do want to highlight is that uh, Playstead Road, which is right about there in West Medford, uh, would not have direct service. It had been served in our earlier version of the network. Uh, that stretch of Playstead Road is entirely within half a mile of other bus service on High Street or Winthrop Street or the commuter rail station also. Uh, also, the proposed 134 would be a little different than today's 134 and that it's proposed to go down Locust Street in Medford, uh, which is that little street right next to the Wegmans. Uh, and then it would also have a more consistent service pattern with more full trips and fewer of those short, weird trips that run on nights and weekends that only go to Medford Square. Ninety-five. Formerly, our proposal on the ninety-five, uh, as shown on the left, uh, would go to Wellington. The revised version on the right goes via Mystic Ave and serves part of Medford that are poised for substantial redevelopment and is similar to what most ninety-five trips do today. This also fills in for the Route eighty-seven that I spoke about earlier, which has been restored to Leechmere in the revised map. So the ninety-five is. Um, filling that void on Mystic Ave that was left behind uh, by shifting the 87 back to its current alignment. So compared to today's 95, there would be one consistent service pattern in that the route would go from Arlington to Sullivan consistently, rather than the current service pattern where some trips start in Arlington and some trips start on Playstead Road. Uh, also, the frequency of this route is slated to improve to every 20 minutes mostly, seven days a week with perhaps some 30 minute service after 10 p.m. This fills in a gap in between the three high frequency corridors uh, that were newly proposed in Medford as part of the bus network redesign process. So that gives um, more prominence to this Route 95 uh, in Medford. Also in Medford, we have some changes to the Route 99 and 108. Uh, bus Route 99 was proposed as shown on the leftmost map uh, and would serve Middlesex Ave in Medford uh, and Wellington Station. Now, based on feedback we heard regarding loss of service to Commercial Street, uh, I think that's actually uh, Malden uh, near the Super 88 uh, and Medford Street near some medical facilities like the Cambridge Health Alliance uh, and also other locations in Everett from current 97 riders. We've extended the 99 in the center map, uh, like a 97 through Everett to the Broadway and to the Gateway Center uh, and on to Wellington. The Middlesex Ave portion of the route would still be served by the extended 108 as shown on the right, uh, which had formerly been proposed to terminate at Malden. So uh, in this case, what we ended up with is there's net one more route kind of between Malden Center and Wellington uh, so that we could fill in some gaps that had been uh, left in the initial version of the network. Uh, but there's no uh, sections uh, that were uh, discontinuing uh, globally uh, as part of this package of changes here. Bus Route 100. Uh, this had been proposed to continue via the 
current terminus near Elm Street, uh, across to Governor's Out, and then up uh, Winthrop Street to Medford High School and uh, out uh, this way. Uh, we propose that the 100 should terminate as it does today near Elm Street uh, because we've restored the 134 service uh, on Winthrop Ave through Medford Square and over to Wellington. Uh, though this does mean that there would be no service on uh, Governor's Ave. When we did have bus service uh, operating there, it was a very, very low ridership. Only a couple more slides. Uh, we have some changes, bus routes 133 and 131. Uh, the 133 initial proposed route is on the left. Uh, in the new network, there is no Route 133, but we've modified our proposed 131 to provide much of the functionality. So uh, the 133 initially had included new service to Anderson, Woburn and commuter rail, and had been part of a package of changes to create local bus service instead of the express services in Burlington and Woburn, uh, and new connections to Stoneham, Melrose, and the Orange Line. However, with the restoration of the 354 express route, one of the trade-offs was that we had to truncate some new service extensions. So you can see that we're no longer showing bus service to Anderson Woburn. Uh, the North Woburn service will be part of the 134 route that I spoke about previously. And the local Woburn, Stoneham, and Melrose connection uh, will be part of the route 131. Oh, thank goodness, I have a little more time. So uh, as part of the uh, route network changes, we also removed uh, part of the proposed extension of Route 131 out to Saugus and Lynn, uh, but most of this is picked up with the modified 429. Uh, that's primarily outside of our service area, so I won't uh, go into too much detail there. So uh, going back to the 350, we talked about this briefly uh, when I mentioned the 80 earlier. Uh, one thing that the proposed 80 does differently than the initial proposed 350 on the left uh, is that we would continue to serve Burlington Mall Road and Third Ave uh, directly. The original proposal had separated out the Burlington Mall Road portion of the route onto a separate 94 to make the 350 more direct and thus have shorter, more competitive travel times as part of the 354 express bus elimination. But with the preservation of 354 service that I'll talk about in a minute, the existing route structure was retained, uh, although it's been shifted uh, as an extension of the Route 80 instead of uh, the 350 via AOI. So we would still go to Burlington, we would still go to Winchester and Woburn and Arlington, um, but it will be as the Route 80 to Davis and Medford Tufts Green Line extension instead of to Alewife on the Red Line. Bus Route 354. Uh, from the northern suburbs, this is probably the biggest uh, change uh, that we've uh, made. Uh, that our initial proposal did not have any express service to Burlington, Woburn, or Medford. Instead, we had redrawn service in those neighborhoods to have seven-day local service to feed into the red, orange, and or green lines. Uh, but one of the things we'd heard from Medford, Woburn, uh, Burlington uh, was that the travel times were not competitive and that there was a lot of interest in retaining the direct connection into downtown Boston. Uh, because of the challenges of parking in the downtown, many folks convey that they have a car, but they're most likely to use transit for those downtown oriented trips where parking is constrained. So in this revised proposal, the 354 would continue to do what it does today and would serve Burlington, Woburn and Medford during rush hours on weekdays. Uh, in order to uh, make that work with our resource changes, uh, there were a number of other uh, route changes that I, that I mentioned already uh, to, uh, to, to keep us within our uh, hours budget for this change and our, our vehicles and our operator counts. Uh, then we have uh, one more change, the bus route 54. Uh, there was a route change to this. Uh, it starts in Arlington Center and had originally been proposed to 
extend over to Riverside and Newton as a crosstown connection. Uh, we had a route change to use Pleasant Street in Belmont instead of Waverly Street due to some narrow roadway width and concerns about uh, the ability to uh, accept bus traffic. There was also a frequency change to this route as an offset for some of the other service restorations that are part of the new package. So this would be about every 30 minutes during rush hours and about hourly for the rest of the day. Uh, and lastly, we truncated this route at Waltham Center rather than Riverside, as had been suggested in the original proposal. And here's another map that shows the truncation. It was a big route, so you can see originally went to Riverside uh, and now is being proposed to go to Waltham Center uh, instead. There were routes that did not change since the May proposal. Uh, the T1, T66, 68, 69, T71, T73. Uh, those are all substantially the same routes uh, as they are today. Uh, in the case of those T routes, um, many of them are better frequency late at night because we've promoted, uh, we've improved what it means to be a high frequency route today. Those key bus routes are generally every 20 minutes or better. Uh, and our expectation is still that they would be every 15 minutes or better. And we're still excited that we're promoting new routes like the T110 uh, from Wellington and Medford over to Wonderland to be high frequency. Uh, we're excited that we're promoting the T70 from uh, Waltham Center through Watertown and Cambridge into Kendall uh, as a new high frequency service. Uh, and those didn't change. So those are some of the things that we're still very excited about. Um, in some cases, we also had a change that was just a frequency or a span adjustment, but not a route change. Uh, so the 78 has later evening service till 1 a.m. like it does today. Uh, it had been kind of in a bucket with other changes of, uh, with other types of services that only had service till 10 p.m., but uh, it was not our intention that that would be a service cut. So we've made it clear that we uh, intend to keep that uh, until 1 a.m. like it does today. So with that, that is all the changes that uh, I wanted to make sure that I had a chance to uh, explain to folks. So now we have a few minutes for questions and answers. So if you're interested, uh, I recommend putting your questions into the chat uh, or comments into the chat because we're able to uh, save those. Uh, I know we're short on time, so we might not have a chance to get to everyone. So I do encourage anyone who's able to, uh, to put your questions and comments uh, into the chat. Uh, and uh, I do see that we have a few hands raised. So if I may, uh, let's see. Uh, Josefa Matawala, I have unmuted you. Yeah, hi. Um, uh, so my question is for the, the Wellington Express bus, which was running from Wellington to downtown Boston. Uh, there's an express bus trip to do. Uh, I don't see that in the list anywhere. And uh, I wanted to check on why that has been uh, discontinued. That's interesting. I'm not familiar with an express bus that ever ran from Wellington into downtown Boston. Wellington, Wellington. Oh, Burlington. So uh, the 354 Express Bus has been put in. Uh, it's a combination. So uh, one of the changes, we used to have the 352 and the 354 separate buses. But uh, one of the things with COVID that we're keeping an eye on is um, the volumes of people traveling uh, into Boston aren't as uh, high as they used to be. So by having these combination routes, we're able to have better frequency uh, and uh, it looks like our breakout room will be closing in about a minute. So I do want to um, thank everyone for your patience and for joining us and taking time out of your schedules to join us at this meeting. Uh, and if we didn't have a chance, uh, we are going to have more questions and answers in the larger group session. Uh, and also, we are saving the chat. Uh, so any of those messages that have been put into the chat, comments or questions, uh, are things that we will have access to. So. Uh, uh, with that, I'll keep mentioning that the 352 and 354 uh, were able to do some of the things that we want to do uh, with this map, like make new high frequency services into um, Somerville and Cambridge and Medford and Malden and 
uh, Revere and Everett and all the different places. The reason that we're able to do some of those things is new resources 